without even realizing it. Oh yeah. You do. I would realize that. You don't. You always check in with me, and you always do the cues. What do I do? For like noir fiction. What do I do? Oh, at the like, end, because you always fuck it up. One of these for the floor tom. <laughs> <laughs> Like, all right, four time. I hope it looks as cool when I do it <laughs> as it is when you do it. I am the guitar player. Please talk in your local mic real quick. Talk about vocals. Hello! Oh, it shocked me. <laughs> hello! 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 hello. <laughs> There's a lot of like red lipstick all over this mic. That's what you get. Kiss it. Oh, it shocked me again. <laughs> I tricked you! <laughs> I put that lipstick there. The government shows you lies! Do you wanna go through a song now? We're getting dangerously close to the fist fight uh, threshold of tension. Oh, we're gonna have that mosh pit. Okay. You are listening to KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. I'm your host, Killer Kate, and this is Dumpster Diving with Killer Kate. And today is a special day because we are in the studio with Run With Hounds. And with that, we're going to start off with a few songs. Thank you so much, guys. Don't 
KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. I'm, I'm your host, host Killer, Killer Kate, Kate, and we, we are, are live in the studio with Run, Run with Hounds. Hounds. Thank, Thank you so, so much, much for coming out, guys. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, man, I'm a little bit blown away right now with that performance, but I was wondering if we could get a quick introduction to all the band members. Absolutely. We got Matt Haynes here on guitar. Sean Irvin on the drums. We got Jordan Condry on lead bass. And we have uh, yours truly, Alex Vincent on vocals. Nice. Well, thank you all for coming out here today. And, thank you so much for having us. Um, could you guys go into a little bit on how long you've been playing together, a little bit of some Run With Hounds history? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think we got some feedback in the monitor. I think we might want to fix the feedback before we continue. Okay. I'm not trying to be a prima donna. No, you're, you're, you're perfect. Wait, there we go. I think we're no. Um, absolutely. Your question was, how long we've we been playing? That's a great question, Kate. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, we've actually only been playing now for uh, just barely over a year. Um, I've known Matt here for about 10 years, I'd say. It is a long time. When I was 14 and he was 16, my first band used to open for his first band. Uh, we got to know each other, clicked immediately, and uh, and then Sean, Sean used to play in another band that one of Matt's projects played with a few times, and uh, a little over a year ago, when I talked to Matt about doing Hounds, he uh, he happened to bump into Sean at an event they were both speaking at, and uh, and he texted me saying, yeah, I got the perfect guy for this. And then uh, Jordan just kind of showed up one day. Jordan just kind of walked into our lockout one day and was like, hey, you guys need a bassist? <laughs> and we were like, yes, we do. Just knocked on the door. <laughs> yeah. He didn't even, he just walked right in. He was like, oh, I'm sorry, I thought this was my room. You guys, what are you doing in here? He was homeless at the time, of course. Nice. So you all have a lot of history playing in other bands. Could you talk a little bit about your musical experience and how long you've been pursuing music as a whole or um, just playing in bands? Yeah, I mean, nothing too interesting, to be honest. If, if any of it was interesting, you would have heard it by now. Definitely. You, you didn't hear any of it. That's <laughs> because yeah, none of it was too interesting. This is, I think, the first interesting thing that any of us have done. Nice. Well, we're all stoked to hear it. And also, could you go into a little detail on, I know the name Run With Hounds comes from the line, let's see, it's Hold with the hare, run with the hounds. That's yeah. an old proverb. Could you talk about what that means to you and um, how you've chose that to represent your music? Absolutely. I can see you've done your homework, Kate. And I just, as of now, I'm, I'm excited for this interview. <laughs> um, yeah, there's actually, there's a few different, it's one of those really old uh, British proverbs that has a few different iterations of it. Um, but it, it essentially... It's, it's an archaic, it's like an antiquated version of have your cake and eat it too. It's just sexier mm. than have your cake and eat it too. Um, and uh, it kind of just fit what, what we had in mind for this whole thing. Uh, when we started writing songs, the poetry that I was writing and have written at this point, since it is now the future, it's all sort of, uh, the first album is, is about kind of a, negative feedback loop of making bad decisions which in turn leads to life becoming more unbearable which in turn leads to more bad decisions and uh and yeah i think the hold the hair and run with hounds just kind of fit with that i don't even remember how we named it that it just literally just happened one day i don't even remember naming it run with hounds but it feels so right hmm. nice so the question, you mentioned the album coming out soon. Could you talk about when that's coming out and will there be a tour to follow? Absolutely. I'm glad you bring that up. It's probably not coming out anytime soon. We do have a full-length album that we have written and recorded. It's all done. It's all sitting there. Uh, we just released one of the songs, but we, uh, 
uh, we're, we're waiting until we have uh, a label who knows how to do that kind of thing better than we do before we, we release it. Um, and did you, did you did you say tours? Is that another thing? Yeah, said? let's talk about tours. Absolutely. Too. Well, th I'm glad you brought up both of those things at the same time because that just so happens to speak on uh, the two things that we need. We got a whole album recorded, but we need a label to distribute it because we don't know how to do that. And uh, <clears throat> we need a booking agent. We've I mean we've played. Um, we've been lucky enough that all the shows we've played up to this point have just been people reaching out to us saying uh, hey we really like you guys would you like to play this or that we haven't had to try to set up any gigs and so far we've played headlining sets for up to 200 people and slightly more at Wayfarer and Slide Bar and Alex's Bar we've played two shows at Viper Room just from people reaching out saying hey we like you guys you want to play this um, which we're extremely grateful for it's been an absolute blessing but uh, we do need a booking guy because we need to get on the road we need to start booking some tours immediately and we are just not equipped to do that ourselves mm. and i also noticed on your various social media pages you encourage fans to wear red socks to your show what's yes, the story there uh i think it's it's kind of a more intimate approach to to wearing a band's merchandise you know you go you go see a band that you like and a lot of other people like you're all wearing you're all out there wearing a uh you know you're all wearing a what's like a band that people like black sabbath you're all wearing a black shirt. sabbath yeah. shirt i don't know how much they're playing these days but oh, I, okay. I guarantee so. you go to a black <laughs> sabbath show you're gonna see a hell of a lot of black sabbath t-shirts <laughs> uh... <laughs> yeah you guys see a lot of people <laughs> with chopped off ring fingers and mm -hmm. salute to tony iomi Red Sox, we felt like it's a more intimate way of identifying people who are at a show to see us. And we've been trying to sort of uh, push it such that, I mean, if, if a bunch of people buy Red Sox so that they can wear them when they see us, so there's a sea of Red Sox and everyone can identify each other. If there weren't, once we're, you know, once we have some clout, if you see somebody out at a gas station who's wearing Red Sox and he, he happens to look like he listens to rock and roll music, you might you might be, be uh, prone to say, hey, you like Run With Hounds? And that guy just might say, well, yes, I do. <laughs> so I, I think it's, it's uh, yeah, that's, that's basically it. Really. Nice. And we wear them, too. We just, we think it looks good, too. Yeah, it does you all. It really does. Right? Very classy. Yeah. Do you think there'll ever be a Run With Hounds edition Red Sox release for fans? Or? I've, I've thought of that. Um, we, have, we have an insignia, which is essentially just the, the, the fool's symbol, the, the zero with a line through it. Um, I think if we ever did that, it wouldn't say like run. I've always hated that sort of thing where it's like, man, those socks are really cool. I wish it didn't say Volcom on it or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so probably if we do it, we'll just do like Red Sox with a little... With a little uh, the insignia on it. What I like about the Red Sox too, specifically, is the semi-arcane nature of it. It's not too uh, too blatant. You can be a guy who's just wearing Red Sox to most folks until the one guy who who's in who's in on it, you know. So I think we'll probably just do a little insignia on Red Sox someday once we have the money. I don't know it costs like what a hundred bucks or something like that. We don't have that kind of money. <laughs> yeah. And also, Alex, you mentioned to me that you did some marketing at the Irvine Spectrum, tried to reach out to people with your um, music and talk to people. How did that go? Do you have any, like, crazy stories associated with that? Uh, yes, to the first part. No to the second part, really. Um, I mean, like I said, we're, we're not equipped to do any of the DIY aspects of being in a band. We're pretty damn good at writing songs, and we're really damn good at playing them. But when it comes to DIY releasing songs or booking a tour, we we are just not equipped for any of that. And so we've we've released a couple songs so far. We've released a cover and uh, we've released uh, a couple songs. And to, to get people to listen, to them, we we just went to to public places and walked around and stopped people and said, "Hey, you got a phone? You got a Spotify? You should you should probably listen to this right now." Yeah. We've got a bunch of YouTube subscribers. I mean, that's literally how we've got all of our YouTube subscribers. And uh, 
Yeah, I mean, we just had to do it the brute force way because we don't know anything else. Well, yeah. you see, we're we're super dumb. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah, which which I'm sure will be our downfall.
Diving with Killer Kate live in the studio with Run With Hounds. Thank you again for coming out today, guys. Thank you so much for having us. Of course. And seeing you here in the studio and also watching various of your videos online, you guys put on such a crazy live show. Could you talk about maybe some crazy on-stage experiences or maybe the craziest thing you've ever done on stage? 
Uh, I ate my own foot on stage once. You ate your own foot? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't do that. Not literally. Yeah, it's a, it's a video speech. Um, no, nothing really particularly crazy. I mean, we, <clears throat> we very specifically try to stay away from doing, like, the kinds of things that a lot of bands do to try to be crazy climbing into the rafters and that kind of stuff. Um, we play the way we play. It's not really forced. It's not a coerced thing. Um, like, by the time by the time we, st we sat down to start playing, I hadn't played any shows in years. Sean hadn't played any shows. I don't think he'd even considered music in years. And Matt, I know, was at the tail end of kind of a dysfunctional band. that was They were touring, but kind of falling apart from within. So when we started playing, it was analogous to a, a handful of guys who either hadn't been in a relationship for a long time or had been in kind of a terrible relationship for too long. So when we started playing, I think we all just had a, a, a well of pent-up energy, and uh, we just can't help but, but lose our minds. Um, but yeah, we, we try to not do anything too gimmicky. We don't climb rafters or climb on amps or do anything like, or like climb on, you know, we don't do any climbing. Well, leave that to the monkeys. Yeah. That's a good band. I'm pretty sure the monkeys did that. That's why they called them the monkeys, <laughs> is because they were always climbing on things. Um, but yeah, we, we try to, to not do anything that's too headline grabbing, just to, just for the headline. We just, that's how we play, really. Do you encourage, like, moshing, or does the crowd typically, like, I jump on stage or anything? No, I mean, people can do whatever they want to do. Whatever, whatever this makes you do, as good as long as I don't get hurt. Um, how important do you feel like your image that you built up, or even the way you look, the way you dress, the way you act as a band? How important do you feel that is to success for a band in general, or to you guys? That's a really good question. I feel like that's something that a lot of people kind of shy away from talking about because they think it's kind of superficial. That and that again, like this is how we dress. You know, all of us have jobs that don't require us to wear name tags. Um, so we we dress the way that we dress, and I think it happens to fit how we sound really well. Um, but I'm not trying to skirt away from your question. In general, I think it's very important. Um, I think it's it's inescapable that how you look is a huge part of how you brand yourself, and how you brand yourself is integral to being a commercially viable thing even if you want to be an underground whatever you need to have some kind of viability and you can't uh it, it doesn't stop at the music it, it's like a whole package kind mm -hmm. of thing so yeah it's really important and i i'm glad that everybody in this band has good taste because we would have had to had to kick somebody out if they didn't i think definitely how about uh music trends like say auto-tune or some different you know Recording trends and stuff like that. Any thoughts on um, some that you think are just like crazy and you would never try? Not really. Anything, anything that is in a studio that's going to help you make the best thing you can make. There's nothing crazy about it. Whether it's auto tune or whatever it is, you're going in there because you're trying to make something, and you're trying to make it as good as you can. Um, I think flangers sound really stupid, but if it worked for someone's whatever, then <laughs> do it a hundred percent. Um, and also, how about, can we talk a little bit about influences? Is there any, maybe like, with this past album, any particular musicians or even like books, events in your life that have primarily impacted it? The interesting thing about writing this first album, I think, is that it was more a process of being specific about what we didn't want to do. Um, the one explicit rule we had was if anything sounded too much like something that's already been done, it didn't make the cut. And, I mean, we wrote and demoed close to 30 songs and whittled them down to 12. And as you add, or as we added more and more songs to the pile, we really found out what Run With Hounds is sonically together. Um, for me personally, and I think everybody in the band agrees, I think the least interesting thing you can do as an artist is something that's already been done multiple times. Mm -hmm. um, that's what a cover band's for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if Run With Hounds was given a show here on KUCI, what kind of music would they incorporate? With these, um, 
you're mentioning all this new music that's so um, just so vast and some good stuff out there. Like, what have you guys been listening to, and would you want to share with others? Yeah, uh, it would probably be a lot of stuff that sounds nothing like us, honestly. 100%. That's what we 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 really don't listen to anything that sounds like us. We all like punk music, obviously, and rock and roll. I really like. Uh, there's this band called Mini Mansions. They're a pop band. Their last album wasn't that great. Don't take my word for it. You know, listen to it, see if you like it. But they're, I mean, they're just a straight pop band, but one of their albums is, is one of my top five favorite albums. What about you? What about Sean? What would you play on the radio? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. You would play them fan. Crooked Vultures. Oh, I don't know. I would never have thought yeah. you would say that. I know he listens to them. I've seen him listen to them. We've listened to it in the truck before. Mm-hmm. I'd play it too. We'd have to ro- Rochambeau to find out who gets to play him. What would you play? Usually my go-to is Nine Inch Nails, but lately I've been kind of on like a hip-hop kind of a vibe. Really? I don't know you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It would be a weird show, that's for damn sure. Yeah. It would be a very strange show, and we would, don't, we would get canceled within a week. A little bit of everything, right? Yeah. But... And how about if you guys were going to pick, like, some musicians that you'd want to guest with your band or cover your song even, like, anyone that you really look up to? And There's no one we look up to, really. I mean, this really is... <clears throat> I'm not trying to, you know, evangelize ourselves, which is obviously specifically what we're doing right now, but <laughs> we're, we're really not trying to... Ooh, I like what they did. Let's do that. We're really trying to do kind of musically just our own thing and we're trying to f- just figure it out as we go I think that's the most fun thing in terms of who wants to cover our songs you know whoever's going to do a good job if you do a bad job just don't put, put it on YouTube if you do a good job I'd love to hear it and what does um, success mean to run with hounds like what would the ideal um, maybe 10 years from now or down the road what, where do you see yourself ideally we, we want to be able to record and play in every major city until we're used up. I guess a bonus, but yeah, we just want to be able to do this thing for forever and not have anything hinder it. That's really the goal. What is that that feeling you get on stage? Is that kind of what you're trying to channel? Like you, um, does it take you to another world, or is it just like? where you're most um, in the zone or in the flow when you're on stage? Uh, it feels good, man. Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> it feels good. <laughs> if it feels good, why would you uh, not do it? Yeah, do anything that feels good all the time. 100%. This happens to feel the best for us, I think, which is why we do it as much as we can. Definitely. I know you spent a lot of time together in the studio and played a lot together. Do you have any stories of... Just like running jokes between you guys or, um, I don't know, just crazy stories between the four of you? We don't joke a lot. Yeah. Never. <laughs> Pretty serious, guys. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, we've only been playing for just barely a year, but we've all gotten to know each other inside and out pretty quickly. Um, and we joke a lot, but I think it's mostly due to a, we have a pretty strict no BS policy. Um, we've been very militant since day one about addressing each other's issues and being vocal about everything and and anything. I think difficult things are... uh, Addressing difficult things are as important as being able to joke around all the time. Because, you know, I think if you you sweep something under the rug, anyone who's not an idiot is immediately like, hey, what's that big lump under your rug? And so that's, that's really been the main thing we, we focus on. We joke as a natural byproduct of being a handful of young, boisterous, uh, rowdy guys, but we're very, also very serious about getting serious. Definitely. Now, before we go into our last song, just overall thoughts on life or music or whatever. If, if, I mean, if anybody really is listening to this right now, if there's one thing I want to evangelize, it's if you are not intermittent fasting yet you 100% need to do it I don't care if if you're trying to gain muscle mass I don't care if you're trying to lose weight if you're trying to have a healthy life you need to be eating that food in an an 8 hour window and even if you're trying to get the calories in because you're bulking up smash it into the 8 hours is not that hard 
if you're eating more than eight hours a day, you're just destroying your body. And with that, Run With Hounds cares about your health. <laughs> they care about you. And thank you so much for listening today. We have one song to close the show. And I just want to address how excited I am and stoked that you are in the studio with me. Thank you so much. This means the world. Yeah. Great to, it's great to be here. Thank you so much. Let's hear that final song. You got it. just heard an amazing set from Run With Hounds. Um, thank you again for coming out. This has been an amazing experience for me and I hope also for you. And any parting words, Run With Hounds? Absolutely. Thank you again so much for having us. This is our first formal interview. I hope we didn't screw it up too much. Um, anybody out there who, who's listening, we got a, a song that just came out on Spotify. It's really, really good. It is really good. I it's agree. really good. I agree 100% with Matt. I'm glad you agree, too. What do you think, Sean? I think it's really good. I, if I heard it, I'd probably I'd join really the like band. It. it really is a good song. It's called Lost on Black, but we got a few songs on Spotify. If you want to search Spotify for Run With Hounds, we've also got an Instagram. If you want to search for Run With Hounds, you can follow us on there. You can hear us on Spotify. You can search on YouTube for some videos we got. We got some live viewers. We got some fantastic new stuff coming at you soon. So stay tuned because we're going to be coming at you live real soon. <laughs> <laughs> And with that, thank you again. And that was Run With Hounds. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> thank you so thank much, you, Kate. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's for sure. Y'all like here in China battling SARS. <laughs> like it's a video game? <laughs> <laughs> SARS fighters. SARS fighters. There's nobody on the street. <laughs>